Now I've ascertained what's going on with the cabling, I've managed to formulate a plan and I can get on with doing the job. So this is what I'm going to do. This single socket is going to become a double socket. So it gives me a bit more room so I can join one side of the ring circuit to the spur, thus extending the ring circuit. That runs across over to here, as we know. So I'm going to extend the ring circuit here. It's going to go up the wall to the socket that's going to be behind the television, back down under the floor. I'm going to have a look at seeing what I can do with this socket here. I hate surface mounted sockets, so I'll try and sink that in. Same with the switch gear up there. But the ring circuit is going to continue all the way over to this socket here. Now I only need one double socket here, so I'm going to get rid of the second one. But I need a part of a ring circuit because I need to put another fused switch outlet here for the cabling which goes out of the wall which goes out to the external awning. Again, I need to put a box there and a, and a plate. This existing cable, which I know is a spur, I can't currently get. I can't currently get to the other side of it, as you know, because there's too much stuff in the way. So what I'm gonna do is, where the plumber has removed the radiator and left me a hole in the floor, I'm going to see if I can grab hold of it either from this hole or from that hole over there, cap it off so it's safe, so that at a later date when I can reach the single socket at the other side of this wall, I can disconnect it. But going back to the ring circuit, it's gonna come from that socket, it's gonna run under the floor all the way across here. This whole entrance way is gonna be blocked off with stud work, so I'm gonna put a socket in here, and then it's gonna continue all the way back to the original single socket, which is gonna become a double.
out because obviously that's insulation, so I can't do anything with that. Then we've got the chase coming down for the cabling. But down here, it's all fallen to bits. It's all one big mess from where it's been hacked before. See, this is all the original filler from, uh, from the previous job. And you can see the cable was diverted up and lots more of this filling stuff, but nothing really for me to get hold of. So what I've had to do is I've had to go and buy some grab adhesive. So hopefully this stuff, which says it's going to set in 15 minutes, will be good enough to hold my back boxes in place. Now what I've also got for these back boxes are these little white clips here which when you join them together, create these. They're just spacers and they go between the boxes. And that means I can get a perfect distance between all the boxes in the holes, meaning that when I fit the accessories, they're all gonna be all lovely and nicely lined up. So the next job I need to do is to take my back boxes, make a note of which Knockouts I need to punch out for the cabling. Add my spacers. So there we have it, you see, I've got all my grommets in the right places. The spacers have been clipped in. So now it's just a case of putting it into position just to see how it looks. And if I get the cables caught, we can see that that will just sit in there and obviously when it's fixed in place that will all be all equidistant and all lovely. Um, but you can see it's all kept in a nice straight line, it's all nice and level. So that's a case of opening up my tube and uh, getting it in there. So hopefully they'll hold long enough so I can get the rest of the cables in and then the filler will hold the rest of the boxes in position.